Where do you build a new airport? Modern life is almost unimaginable without air travel. But as cities grow, planning for new airports becomes increasingly complicated. Airports can be one of the single largest users of land in an urban region. And so their impact on surrounding communities and the environment is gigantic. This means the location of a new airport must be carefully considered. This is Built World, a channel about architecture, urban design, and infrastructure. And today, we're talking airports. New airports are extremely complicated projects. They require the acquisition of large tracts of land, create extreme levels of air and noise pollution, and must be easily accessible to millions of travelers and employees, all while not being too disruptive to existing surrounding areas. The Seattle region is looking at building a new airport as we speak. Its main airport, Seattle Tacoma International, aka SeaTac, is tiny. At 4.2 square miles, it's one of the smaller major airports in the U.S. A regional commission has projected that air travel demand will grow to 94 million passengers annually by 2050. SeaTac handled 51 million in 2019. So the region is considering three strategies to handle this additional load. Number one is expanding SeaTac. SeaTac is wedged on a narrow hilltop surrounded by steep slopes and neighborhoods. The airport underwent a massive project to add a third runway in 2008, but lacks the space to add another. Multiple terminal expansion projects have also been recently completed or underway. Still, this will only make a small dent in the projected growth of demand in the coming decades. Another option is to expand Payne Field, an existing regional airport north of Seattle. Payne Field primarily serves Boeing's Everett assembly plants, and it began hosting modest commercial air service in 2019. But Payne Field faces similar geographic constraints as SeaTac, which will hamper large-scale expansion. Therefore, the Commission has concluded that a third solution is also necessary for the region. Build a brand new 2-5,000 to 5 acre airport from scratch. The Commission has scouted multiple rural sites for construction. These sites are far enough away from existing urban development to minimize adverse impacts and streamline the process of acquiring land. This is what's known as a Greenfield Airport. As its name suggests, a Greenfield Airport is a new airport built on previously undeveloped natural land. These sites allow planners to essentially design and build an airport from scratch. Greenfield airports are increasingly common as airports become more massive, particularly outside the U.S. in cities like Beijing, Hyderabad, Istanbul, and Dubai, to name a few. In the U.S., however, the most notable Greenfield Airport project was in Denver. In the 1960s, Denver was emerging as a critical hub for air travel. Their existing hemmed-in Stapleton Airport was no longer adequate, so leaders proposed a gigantic and ambitious new airport project one that could not only handle existing traffic, but also future growth on a massive scale. On a rural site 24 miles from the city center, the new Denver International Airport opened in 1994. Its large central terminal was flanked by some of the world's longest runways, fanning out into the Colorado High Plains. At 54 square miles, Denver International Airport rivals the size of San Francisco itself and is twice the size of Manhattan, making it the largest airport by area in North America and the third largest in the world. As a major hub for global air travel, Denver International Airport has proved transformative for the city, meaning the airport site, which was chosen for its ample open space, has now become a new focal point for the region. Today, planners are envisioning large-scale new developments with housing, office space, and industrial uses within the airport vicinity using its global connectivity as a selling point. This is a trend increasingly common around the world. This concept of airport-centric development is generally referred to as Aerotropolis, and it can be seen in places like Dallas-Fort Worth, Atlanta, Chicago, and Amsterdam. Airports are no longer transportation hubs in and of themselves, and with the emergence of vast new greenfield airports around the world, these sites are having a big influence on the development of the urban region around them. 
It's an idea that makes Seattle's airport plans all the more interesting and concerning. The short list of Seattle's possible airport sites mainly includes areas in rural Pierce and Thurston counties. These sites are pretty much out in the country, characterized by open space, forest, and farmland. In their current state, a new major airport out here is almost unimaginable. But even more so is the resulting construction of highways, rail, power, and sewer, as well as development like hotels, housing, offices, and even logistics centers. A new airport would represent a seismic shift in the development of the Seattle region for decades to come. Planners salivate at the idea of an empty greenfield site. But are these places truly empty? Farmers, residents, and nearby tribal leaders say otherwise. Instead, they see an environmental nightmare, bringing polluting and noisy jets, disrupting wetlands and watersheds, and cutting wide swaths of forest. Add on the fact that air travel is a significant contributor of carbon emissions, and it's clear that these are all valid concerns. Should we be planning our city's future around gigantic new airports? At the same time, it's undeniable that air travel, a cornerstone of modern life, is here to stay. And without the availability of viable alternatives, like high-speed rail, for example, demand for air travel is almost certain to continue to grow. So in Seattle and cities around the world, it's an increasingly pertinent question. Where do you build a new airport?